I'm Linda Ann Smith, video creator for ColorArt.com. Today I'm going to play with the Bind and Resist and some Twinkling H2Os. I mixed the Bind and Resist with just a few drops of water to make a paste. And at first I thought that Bind and Resist was supposed to be used like a watercolor mask. Well, you don't actually remove Bind and Resist. It sticks to the paper and it doesn't give that white. I thought when I was putting this on at first that it would give uh, me the white and I would be rubbing it off and leaving the white of the paper. It didn't turn out that way. It gives a very subtle, shiny effect that uh, actually turned out really nice for this particular composition because it's like an underwater abstract. If you have primary elements artist pigments, you can mix those powders with Bind and Resist and get a tinted Bind and Resist and it will give you basically a, a paint, another kind of paint. Of course, you're going to mix more water with it, and it comes with instructions on the bottle, but you'll mix more water with it than I did for this paste. It's my first time using this particular product, and it's always fun to see what the properties are of each new product. One of the things that you really have to learn in watercolor is not to try to force the watercolor to do things that it doesn't want to do. If you let the watercolor do what it wants to do, then uh, you'll have fresher, better results. And I think that's also going to be true, for me at least, with the Bind and Resist. Before I go over it with paint, I make sure that it's completely dry. And I think if you look closely there, you can see that it's shiny. Well, that shine never does go away. That remains. And I actually put Bind and Resist on a little lid here and made a little circle. Uh, print with it. Again, at this point I'm still thinking that I'm going to lift this off later and the, it'll reveal the background white paper. When the Bind and Resist was dry, I painted over it with Summer Breeze, Navajo Pearl, and Sky Blue. And I began dripping alcohol into the paint. I love the little puddles that it made. The alcohol needs to be dripped in while the paint's still very wet. Now I'm adding uh, rings of tanzanite and bringing my alcohol back in. Just dripping it off the end of my paintbrush. That is so much fun to watch. It's almost like magic. Oh, and I should also tell you that before I started painting, I prepped my watercolor paper. The watercolor paper is a 140 pound watercolor paper and I have it taped down to a board. I prepped it by uh, putting a layer of gesso on it because I know that when you have gesso behind the Twinkling H2Os that the alcohol really reacts and I was aware that I was going to use alcohol on this as well as the bind and resist. I'm going to play with some of my stencils here that um, look like whirlpools or water, and the next color that I'll be using is Twilight. The idea here isn't to get a perfect stencil print, it's to get uh, some little ripples that look like water on the page. And so I've dabbed this uh, dabber off on my plate to try to get a good consistency. I did go in with it just a little bit too dry probably, but if you get it too wet, then it runs under the stencil, and I fully expect it to do that. So I add a little bit of water to it, actually dropped a little drop right there. And this is going to run under, I know that, but it's also uh, making some nice little textures that look like water. After I dabbed with this for a little while and played with it, I decided that I wanted another color, but I wanted it to be fairly subtle. So I changed my color to Summer Breeze. And those two colors, Summer Breeze and Twilight, uh, didn't contrast so much that it looked like I had really changed colors. It was quite subtle, just like I wanted it. And the more layers 
shimmers, the more shimmer. So I decided to add another layer on here of Navajo Pearl. It's a very soft and subtle color. It was just enough of a color change to kind of blend everything together. I never can wait for the stencil to be complete before I lift it. I always hold it down on one edge and peek to see how it's doing, but I was finished with this and I pulled the stencil up and that's looking pretty good. Here's a pretty color, Summer Breeze. And when your paints sit for a little while with water in them, uh, yes, that wakes them up, but also a little stirring will bring that mica back up to the top. The mica tends to settle, so anytime you're using a shimmery paint like this from Color Art, you probably should do a little stirring if you want the mica to, to uh, be more evident. And I'm just going in and dabbing some little areas with this pretty little Summer Breeze color. I'm looking back at that part that I stenciled and I'm thinking that probably in my overall composition that's going to be a little too crisp. So what I can do later uh, is take just a plain watercolor brush, uh, a large watercolor brush, and I'll let this completely dry and then I'll go back later and I will drag the watercolor brush over it to kind of move that paint and make it softer. That's the good thing about paint moving. Uh, sometimes we don't want the paint to move, but when it's too crisp like this and it's not exactly what I was going for, it is what I was going for. I like the, the pattern, but I want it to be softer. So later that's what I'm going to do with this. And now I'm bringing in another stencil, kind of a whirlpool look here, and I'm gonna play with it the same exact way. Up to this point, my palette has been completely in cool colors, which I often do, but I needed something just a little warmer, so I pulled in this uh, black cherry color, and I'm using these whirlpool designs. I actually went to a brush to make some of the designs, and found that that worked a little better for me on these than the pouncing did. I had a little better control of where the colors went and um, how dark I got them and that sort of thing. And this black cherry, although it's a violet color, it has just enough red in it to um, kind of change up things and give it variety, which I really liked the way it was looking with all these colors together. Some of my favorite colors. I added another wash of color uh, incorporating some of this uh, black cherry color and I worked quickly before the shine disappeared on that uh, while it was still wet and added more alcohol with the end of my paintbrush and I think I did that just because I really like to watch this happen. I'm not sure I did it for the uh, aesthetic look. Just now I uh, softened that area that I was talking about earlier with water and then I added uh, another glaze over that uh, stencil. There's no such thing as me staying clean and doing a painting. I put a little water and a little paint on my fingers and I'm spreading it around to soften some of the areas and get some good control on where the color goes. I like some of these textures, but at some point my work always manages to go to a huge mess. And don't get discouraged when that happens. It usually means that you just need to push forward and work some more. Here I am softening that area with water that I talked about earlier. Uh, this is just plain water. I'm brushing it to move the paint, softening that up. I'm trying to turn my page several different ways so that you can see what that bind and resist did in the background and the photography here just isn't going to catch it, I don't think. Okay, I'm ready to start another phase of this composition and that will be a dragonfly, which I sketched on paper. I sketched both sides of it, but I kind of want to make sure that it's a little more symmetrical. It doesn't have to be perfect, so I'm going to fold it down the center and cut it out. I took my time. I could draw this on there free-handed, but having a pattern gives me more confidence, and it also allows me to shape or move the shape in the areas uh, different ways so that I can see where it looks best in my composition. Now I'm outlining with a permanent pen. It's an artist's uh, pit pen adjusting the shape a little bit and going back in, finish the outlining and then add just a few details 
with my pen. My next step will be to add some metal leaf adhesive sizing to the body of the dragonfly. I haven't finished the wings yet, but I'm going to put this on because you need to let it set about 30 minutes and get tacky before you add any gold leaf, or in this case it'll be copper leafing. Did you notice that my paper's warped in areas? I'll be able to fix that later by spraying, spritzing it on the back side with some water and then putting it uh, under some heavy books or surfaces to keep it flat. I'll be able to straighten that out, so I'm not too worried about that. This is 140 pound watercolor paper and uh, 300 pound would have been so much better, but it's a step up and it's much more costly. While I'm waiting for the adhesive to dry on the body, I'm trying to be careful and keep my hands away from the body, but it's a perfect time for me to go ahead and start adding the details to the wings. I want the wings to look transparent, so I want to see the color from beneath, but I'm going to put a lot of lines and texture into this. To give it structure, at first I try uh, making similar lines on each side, not exact lines. I can't exactly replicate what I do on one side on the other side, but just drawing freehand at similar lines to give it some structure so that it appears similar. And then I'm going to go back in and I'm going to add lots and lots and lots of lines to fill in the wings. You can see the symmetrical areas that I did here, and now I'm just going in freehanded and adding more. I did notice when I observed um, a real dragonfly that a lot of the structure of the wings looks like little branches, uh, like tree branches. So I used that to the advantage and uh, I went in and I put line after line after line just branching off and here's my results. And I even went back and added more branches to that. Every time I saw a little space I tried to fill in another little branch. So now I'm ready to use the copper leaf that I got at Hobby Lobby and it's, I think it was about nine dollars several years ago. I'm not sure what it is now. This has been in storage for a while. And I'm pretty clumsy with this. Uh, you use wax paper which comes in the, with the package with it. And all the little extra pieces that come off, you can move those around and place them uh, on the adhesive where nothing has actually stuck. Uh, there'll be a few places where you wanted adhesive and maybe I got my hand into it when I was working on the wings, I'm not sure, but there's a couple of places where, that I had to touch up with adhesive and go over again. I also have a gold foil, but I chose the copper color because I, this has so many blues in it and the opposite color across on the color wheel, the complementary color is orange. Well, the copper color has more uh, orange color in it than the gold color does in the gold leafing. So I thought this would be a better choice than the gold and would show up better and give a nice contrast to the background. Leafing foils are very fragile as you can see I just brushed them away with a brush so be sure before you add any details to it that you make sure it's completely dry. I chose to add a minimum of detail because I think copper pretty much says it all. One note of caution, uh, the foil will tarnish over time. So if you want to keep it bright and shiny, you're going to need to purchase the product, uh, they, I can't call the name right now, but you get it at Hobby Lobby or Michaels or whatever craft store happens to be near you. And I have run out. I have not been into these supplies in some time, so I didn't realize that I didn't have that particular item. After I go out and replenish that item and seal this real well, I will also use uh, the acrylic spray that's meant for sealing watercolors and acrylic paintings. I've always been a huge promoter of enjoying the journey of making the pro product more than concentrating on the end product. But then there are those times when you feel a sense of accomplishment and I think having a, ha a happy journey causes you to have a better end product. So I'm happy with this one. Goodness, I had such a good time doing these uh, paintings. <laughs> I think I say that every time I use Twinkling H2Os. And I was wondering, why don't you put in your comments below what your favorite product is from Color Art. If you had half of the fun watching this that I had making it, I hope you'll give me a thumbs up 
and uh, sharing the video on your social media is very helpful because other people get to see it that way that may not be subscribed to my channel. I hope if you haven't subscribed that you will subscribe and also subscribe to Color Arts uh, video channel. I'm going to put all those links down below. Uh, I know that when I watch on Smart TV, the only thing I can do, I can't make those comments and everything, but I can always give a thumbs up. So thumbs ups are appreciated and they tell YouTube that you like what you're seeing and want to see more of my work. In making and viewing YouTube videos, I've noticed that a lot of times a lot of information is included in the description box below the video. So when you finish watching the video, click on that description box. I'm going to tell you what, which color art products I used, where to find them. I'll give you all of my personal links so that you can find me if you want to find me. Uh, the link to my Facebook art group, uh, all of color arts links, and it's just a valuable well of information. So be sure and check that out. I will finish up patching up the areas that I missed with some of the foil, some of the adhesive earlier. You can do it right on top of the former um, foil that you put down. Thank you so much for watching and enjoy the detail pictures.